Thanks for joining me. This lab session is entitled Enhancing a JMeter Test Script. Sometimes there are functions that span more than one application page. When that happens, the application design calls for calculated or table formatted data to pass between the pages or screens. Performance test tools like JMeter will record variables that are passed as static information, though the data really is dynamic. So when the recorded script is executed, the data still contains the value during the recorded session. And the result is either the function fails with an error condition, or it fails without broadcasting the error condition. For example, a simple situation is for login processing. On the surface, valid user credentials must be processed by the test tool to engage the application with success. However, sometimes the login process includes a background dynamic value called a user session ID. If the verification part of the login process does not receive that generated value, the login process fails. How the condition is communicated will determine if the test tool is able to continue the testing. The web tool's cancel process expects dynamic data to be passed between two events. If the data is correct, the cancel selected reservation or cancel all reservation requests will process successfully. Otherwise, it will not honor the request and not set an error condition. With test automation tools, this condition is not acceptable for functional or performance testing. How does a test analyst manage this situation? Data analysis is important to testing or test debugging activities. A function like cancel or remove implies that a database or other data store should reflect the action. If the function is to remove data, then I can use the tool to confirm that. Or, I can access the data store to confirm that it reflects the change. What can I do if the function is not working? Can I just overlook the situation? If you are testing its functionality, the developers need to know what you found so they can fix it. But if you are performance testing, you need to understand if it is a function issue or a test tool issue. If the issue is the function, you may have discovered an error condition that can only occur during performance user concurrency testing. Developers need to get involved. However, if you determine that the issue is related to dynamic data in the test tool, you need to address the issue. Sometimes handling this dynamic data in the test tool is just a matter of capturing data processed in one event and passing the data to another event. That is where the regular expression capabilities in the JMeter's preprocessors and postprocessors meets the challenge but sometimes the dynamic data needs to be presented by the application differently in event response data. It may also require working with the developers, but for web tours, the code is local. So it is a performance tester challenge. I hope I have armed you with enough information for us to walk through a demonstration of handling dynamic data to meet the test tool requirement for successful processing. Okay, we're talking about dynamic data versus static data and what a impacts it can have on your scripting and testing of that script. 
let's take a look at what I did here. First of all, I we're, we're at the performance test script again for web tours. I only enabled setup thread group and teardown thread group. Everything else is disabled. I actually ran a little test after changing the loop count to three on both of them so that we wouldn't have so much data and I changed the input file to use a different file so I ena enabled a new one and disabled the main file control so that this one just has one FCA user and then multiple FCH users. The FCA user are what we used in the previous tests and we cleared out all of the reservation data using that process of cancel. And so what I wanted to do was to show you one of them and what it looks like now and then show you, work with the FCH records to show you what else you need to know about concerning dynamic data and static data. Okay, hopefully you followed that. I'm going to pull that back. All right, so I ran a test using setup and teardown, and this is the results here. Let's take a look at first the login. Here we'll see the use that user session ID that I meant mentioned in, in the early part of the, of this lecture and lab. All right. So I expand that. And if we look down here at, I believe it's navigation. Yes. This is the nav.pl program or navigation program that I mentioned. And it, we can see on, in the HTML data, there is a hidden field called user session. And it has a value. That value was generated in that process. And so now that value has to be taken over to the login process or login.pl that program needs to receive that data and process it along with the user ID and password. That will allow successful login to the application. Otherwise, without that user session ID, it will not log in. And you will think everything is fine because it doesn't provide any error message when it doesn't have a valid current user session ID. So here in login, we don't see it in the output, but what we do see is something that lets us know that it seems like things work because we got to the welcome page for the application. And it also remind you don't forget to sign off so it obviously accepted that data that was passed and we can look at the request and actually see that there is a an, an SID or session ID and a value has been provided so it took a part of the the full session ID and sent that put that into a cookie that it uses to process or to complete the login process. All right, I think that's enough on that one. So that's fairly simple to do. I can also show you from the, let's, let's see, right in the setup, we'll expand this and look at the login process. I believe it's in the login B. Yeah. So we have, sorry, we picked up 
using a regular expression, we picked up the user session ID value. So that's where that code is. And then on the login itself, U session was the field. Let me go back to the regular extract. That's the variable name we gave it, U session. And over here, we passing not only the password and the user ID, but we're passing the U session for user session. And that combination provides what the login program needs to successfully log in. All right, let's uh, collapse that again, go back to the results tree. And now I want to look at the itinerary C, which is the process for canceling reservations. I'll expand that. And I'm, what I'm looking for here is itinerary.pl. And there's also itinerary.pl here. So looking here first, <coughs> excuse me, and looking at the response data, you see a message that comes to the screen actually in the application and it says no flights have been reserved. What that says or uh, the application uses that message to indicate that there's actually no data in that for that user. So trying to cancel anything will not process. So it doesn't give you an error message. It just provides that message saying no flights have been reserved. So that's a good thing. And that was for log the FCA8 user, one that we had provided the cancellation in an earlier test. So now if I look at this user, this is an FCH1 user, which we did not process before. So it had data in it. But now we can see, let's see if we expand here and then click here. We see a little difference in the screen. What, what we see is actually flight data. So you'll see Start it, it'll always have this flight pound one. And if we scroll down a little more, we'll see another one and so on. And that is the flight data or reservation data for that particular user, FCH1. Now, if we expand this transaction controller, this is the cancellation request and the request is for, let me scroll to the right here, this 1530 ID, and it ends with JU. Can we find that in here? If I go back to the top, come back over here, there it is, 1530 number JU. So that is a hidden field called flight ID. And what I had to do was to create a regular expression in order to pick that data up along with there's another piece of data I don't see it right here that should be a oh yes in that checkbox value and so let's go over again to this is the teardown the cancellation, I'm sorry, not the teardown, the startup, cancellation, expand this guy here, and let's, here's the first itinerary.pl, and here is the second one. And so, on the first one, what we do is, I have several expressions or extractors, if you will, is a, is a better word in this case. We have first 
a regular expression extractor that picks up what we labeled FID, and that is to look for flight ID and pick that value. Okay, so it captures the value, the flight ID, and places it in this variable FID. Then we have a boundary extractor, which is similar to the regular expression extractor, and we're looking for this piece of data, a total of, and that was further down in the response data, and it after it after a total of, it actually has a value how many flight reservations have been made, and then it ha it ends with scheduled, so a total of X scheduled. That's what we're doing with this. We're looking for, we've got boundaries that we're establishing, and we want the data that's in between those left and right boundaries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have another boundary extractor, and we're looking for what we're calling ticket IDs. So the left boundary has ticket IDs, and the right boundary has this less than symbol. And we're putting it in another variable called FIDS. And we'll sh I'll show you what that one is in the response data. And then there's ticket numbers. So we have a variable name, nums. And we have boundaries we're looking for, ticket numbers, colon, followed by a less than symbol. So in between is the data that we want to capture and put into this variable. Same thing here. We look for the data in between these two boundaries and put it into that variable, FIDS and so on. Now, it just so happens these two are new ones I had to add once I found out that the cancellation process wasn't working. What I needed was to be able to capture data in a different format than what was available in the response data. So let's go back to the response data and see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. All right, first, since we're at that first, I think we're there, yes, we're at that first uh, page itinerary, and as I told you, we see all the flights, and they start with this value, flight pound one. If I move the cursor, or, or go way to the bottom, here is that message I was talking about, a total of, and we picked up this value, seven scheduled. So in this particular user, it's telling us there were seven, or there are seven reservations that exist. Now, after that, we see that other familiar variable and that is, well, values, I'm sorry, ticket number followed by a less than symbol. So we pick up these numbers just like it is, one comma two all the way through seven. Then you see ticket IDs and we see flight ID values. And so what does that mean? It means that these are values that must be supplied to the second iteration of the cancel event or the calling of the itinerary.pl program. So by passing these two pieces of data, it's able to process that correctly and conduct the cancel, either cancel selected or cancel all. Now, 
How did that come about? We'll talk about that in a minute. But just understand that if we go now to the itinerary cancel, either one of these, we see there's a CGI fields variable, a flight ID, remove all flights Y, and remove all flights X. Well, one can always be the number, I mean Y can always be the number one, but this is needed, flights, which is the number of flights that exist. That was seven. And NUMS is the table of numbers, ticket numbers, one, two, three, through seven. And FIDs is the table that had the ticket IDs or flight IDs. So that is what's different or these variables, they weren't available originally the way the application was designed. They were in, in separate locations throughout the response data. So what I needed was to be able to have these already created inside the response data and then just pick it up with a boundary extractor. I could have used a regular expression. Either one would allow me to capture the data and put it into a variable that now can be specified and it's all dynamic. So that data would never always be the same, especially if you're canceling some of the selected records or if you're can canceling all the all the data is gone hopefully you follow that okay so i want to talk about one more thing and that has to do we're going to minimize this and that has to do with you seeing the environment or the install environment of web tours we i believe we talked about that once before in a previous uh, lesson, but I want to point it out again. We were talking about nav PL, login PL, itinerary PL. These are all the programs that are executables and, and actually uh, Perl executables for the application. And if we go into users folder, this is where all of the user IDs that have been created in the application reside. If we open, let's say this first one, FCA1, which we've processed before, we will see that all it has is the user data, but there is no reservation data. And you'll see what it looks like to have reservation data. Let's minimize close that. Let's go to, we know now that we took, all of these should have no data in it, just like we saw the first one. This one should have no data in it now as well, but this, we should have some in this ID. Let's see what it looks like. Yes, here we are. So, after the user I, information, we we get one or more reservation information data. So this is treated like a database or a data store. All the data that's created for each reservation is just stored sequentially in this file, acting as if that file is a database. And now, a, from a performance test standpoint, this can still be somewhat beneficial, even though it's not a real database environment, it still is data stored and 
processed like if it was database. And so it still gives you a certain amount of performance impacts to, to read and write that data, to process it for cancellation, to go in there and remove that data, one or more occurrences of the reservation data. Okay, hopefully that was helpful to you. I thank you for your time. My time has ended for this session. I thank you for yours. Join me in the next video.